Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. As always, please leave a comment down below what you guys think of today's episode, especially for this first story, which is highly controversial. I was asked about this in my yesterday's episode of CSK News. If I was going to cover the Sparkles video, which was actually titled, or in the title, it had the quote, Alu Akbar. Now, I want you guys, please, to comment down below what you guys think about this. The overall question to all of you in the comment section is, do you guys think that Sparkles is okay to put Alu Akbar in the title of one of his videos? Obviously, met with a bunch of backlash there. Here's a dislike ratio and a bunch of the comments were also equally bad. Now, many of you guys wanted to hear my opinion on this, and I personally think I would never have put this as a title to my videos, but it was actually used in the context of the video. Obviously, one of the players or people featured in the video did word-on-word -word say Alu Akbar, but it was kind of a controversial choice by Sparko, so I want to know what you guys think. Was it okay for me to use that in the title? Now, obviously, you know, my personal opinion, this is actually seen out of context many of times because you see today's social media, today's news, whenever you hear the words Alu Akbar, you associate that with negative connotation and with negative events. Although Sparkles did post this on his own video, he said he was not going to take it down, he was not going to rename it because, you know, when you actually look at the Arabic language, Alu Akbar means God is great, God is good, and so it's taken out of, you know, a negative connotation because, unfortunately enough, nowadays, with the news being the way it is, every time we hear Alu Akbar, we either reference back to the Call of Duty days when someone's going to try and kill someone, or even reference a lot in the news media today, it's referenced in a poor way. You guys know what I'm trying to say, it's hard to say it. Um, it has a bad social connotation because of some events that have happened in the past year or so and in the past itself. But in general, it's actually a good saying. Now, again, it is kind of a, a controversial topic. I would never put this as my own video title itself, but that was kind of a controversial issue that happened this past week, guys. Do I think it's okay? Not necessarily. I'm kind of on the fence here. I don't want to. I don't want to be riding Sparkle's fanboy train. I don't want to actually go against him either. I do kind of uh, understand where he's coming from with the whole God is great thing. But it was definitely controversial. Would I have done it? No. Should he have done it? I can't really answer that. But also moving on to bigger stories as well. Even more importantly, though, we actually had MVS tweet out this three months. Ago. Ago. You guys know, many of you guys know about Loop, the streamer, the popular CSGO streamer who really took off and peaked about three months ago and people found out about his uh, syndrome where he plays with, you know, pretty much no hearing, no sense of hearing, as well as no, no sight. And so it's pretty cool to see a guy who streams, you know, frequently enough out there in the CSGO community grab a lot of attention. And Envious did go ahead and offer him, or I guess offered him a full-time streaming contract via Twitter, but apparently he tweeted out this yesterday and it confirmed that Envious never really fell through with that. They never followed through with that and uh, so far they've actually never offered him an in an actual contract or an actual offer of money or some of money or some alignment for the future for him and so unfortunately enough it does seem that offer has fallen through and if that actually is true that might be the biggest publicity stunt we have ever seen oh yeah you have a disability oh everyone's loving this guy at once let's just tweet out a tweet yeah we will offer you some money in the future just everyone look our way for a second yes we're envious we're a great organization and yet they have not paid him a single cent they have not not offered him a single contract as of right now we'll see what envious and how they actually respond to the situation i hope the best for him and a quick update to that previous story just two hours after loop tweeted that out envious did contact him allegedly as loop did update us with this tweet on screen apparently he will be under contract with envious sometime soon and after three months of them avoiding him all it took was a single tweet that's all he had to do it kind of just worries me the fact that envious offered him three months ago and all of a sudden one tweet they were like oh yeah i forgot about that loop guy oh wait controversy so yeah we'll give you a contract so otherwise though good news for loop he will be signed with envious sometime soon now officially three months after the fact. And in some smaller news, you might not have heard about Team Ownage actually participating in a qualifier for DreamHack Atlanta coming up sometime soon in July. We don't often see simple pug teams out there, but yes, Team Ownage heavily participated in this event, and they actually got so close to qualifying for DreamHack Atlanta, which would be obviously a huge tournament for them and huge achievements because they were facing off against some top-tier North American talent. Obviously, nowadays, not too much saying there with top-tier North American talent, but CLG being one of the many teams they actually beat. CLG, not only did they beat them, they actually 2-0 swept them in a best of Three series and played quite well against them. They also, in the semifinals, they 2 1 Pain Gaming. Pain Gaming, one of your North American teams who was in the North American qualifier for a major qualifier, so still one of your top North American teams. They're also in ESCA next season or ESL Pro League next season at the bottom of that, but still nonetheless, they 2 1 Pain Gaming. And finally, in the finals in the championship, they actually played against Team Misfits for that one spot to DreamHack Atlanta, and they were so close. Obviously, not the best map scores for them, but still the fact they made it to a best of three against Misfits. 
They did get 2 0 there, but we almost, for the first time in a long time, had a pug team. A simple pug team put together by Flom, other popular names on that team, Poland. They almost got to DreamHack Atlanta. So close, yet so far away. We'll see in the future what these guys can do. Now, bouncing off this, I do want to talk about visa issues. Ty Lu, one of those teams not having visa issues as of late, but they actually had a different uh, issue this time around with airlines going on their way to ESL Cologne. Now, first of all, for all you Ty Lu and Chinese fans out there, Ty Lu will make it on time as one of their analysts, actually uh, one of their therapists, their team therapist, who knew that Ty Lu actually had it. He tweeted out this, guys, they actually were backlogged and missed their first flight because they had to show proof the team was going to return to China. This team has been very, very busy. They've been to the major qualifier, now to ESL Cologne. They have other events coming up, obviously, this year as well. They had to prove they were going to go back to China. Now, first of all, for all you guys who are like, oh, that's racist. You know, what kind of airline has to make sure you're going back to China? And for all of you guys who are like, oh my gosh, you know, what kind of government over there is going to make sure they don't they don't leave? It's okay. For most international airlines out there, they're going to make sure you have a return flight just for, you know, in any instance, for an international flight, you're not trying to abandon a country. Most international airlines are going to make sure you have a return flight going back. So it's a commonality. It's a common rule out there, not just char not just targeting Chinese teams and people with visa issues in the past. So don't worry. They did actually make it, though. They did have to prove to the airline they had a return flight. They were not going to be leaving China for good, and they will be coming back. So that was kind of cool to see. Hopefully in the future this problem does not persist and we don't have complaints about that. But Ty Lu will be at ESL Cologne, which does start very soon. So look out for that, guys. It's going to be a very fun tournament to watch in on. And lastly for today's episode of CSK News, I will be in New York all this week. So please leave a comment down below. I have the free time to actually reply to every single comment for this video. So thank you guys for that. I'll be in New York till Friday or Saturday. So no videos until then. So thank you guys for watching. For our last story, though, I do want to talk about the quick progression of Freiburg from being a player for NIP to being an analyst now at a couple of events and a big one coming up will be ESO Clone as he will be an analyst there alongside Yanko and Sponge. Kind of a really cool event. I hope you guys all watch it. Not only are there going to be all the top teams there besides I think it's going to be a Strauss and Gambit Gaming are the only really you know, top 20 teams that will not be there. At least there's going to be a lot of top tier teams there in general and some great talent as well as we're going to have three ex-pro players all on the analyst desk. I'm really cool to see and very curious to see what the future of Freiburg does hold. Him being one of the more popular CSGO players to actually leave the scene for a time being and obviously be signed as an analyst very very shortly afterwards. Not how many people out there doing that, you know, Sponge being one of them, Yanko being way, way back there, but Sponge probably being the most recent one besides him. So it's going to be cool to see how the analyst desk goes and if Freiburg does stick it out or he returns to CSGO sometime soon. Now, bouncing off that as well, Fnatic had an announcement. Vugo, or Hugo, their head coach, formerly a long time ago, he did step down to a management role several months ago as well. He has now officially departed from Fnatic organization and he will be taking a job with Fragbite. So, all you Hugo fans out there, Fnatic will still stick it out with their current coach, Jumpy, but Vugo, who's actually actually you know, had a management role with the team. Not really too much of an impactful role in their gameplay itself. Obviously Fnatic doing quite well recently. He'll be leaving Fnatic for the time being and joining up with Fragbite for future production issues. We're not really sure what his job with them will be, but congrats to Hugo. He actually landed a new job right out of the gate of Fnatic and very nice of Fnatic to actually have him under contract until he had a next job lined up. So that's going to do it for today's episode of CSGO News. I hope you guys all enjoyed. If you guys did, please leave a comment down below or a like if you guys want. No, no don't do that second part. As always, live, love, laugh a lot. My name is Jake. Remember, I like you. I will see you guys all in a few days, probably four to five days, with another episode of CSK News. Hope you guys all enjoyed. Remember, I like you.